I think that's been like the hardest thing because I look back and I know like pursuing everything that I felt like God had spoke to me from such a young age. I just literally gave it all up like it was nothing. It is crazy sitting here though. Seeing us here? Like sitting here right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've known you since you're what? 14, 12, 13? 13, 13, I just turned 13. Why did, you, why did you come? How did you come? So I grew up in a Methodist church and I don't ever distinctly remember anybody talking about the Holy Spirit in depth. I would see like the older people in the congregation raise their hands and I thought you had to be like a certain age or like status to raise your hands in worship. Like I didn't think yeah, it was it, like a collaborative no, it's, it's like a level five, six, something like <laughs> was, that. I was Catholic for 12 years. There was no hand raising. <laughs> <laughs> like that wasn't even a thing. But it was very like status versus like relational. I just wasn't aware of like the relationship you could have with Jesus. It was more of like, I would go to Sunday school, like memorize my scriptures, get my points, get my prizes. <laughs> like, get a treat, hopefully. Yeah. They switched pastors like three times in a year. So we stopped going and I was like wanting to find a church. 2011, overnight lock-in was my first event. First person I literally walked in, I met Sid. I bought my ticket from her, which is funny. My wife was the first person you met? You can't forget her, that big curly blonde hair. I remember all the times you'd like come into our house, hanging out with Sid. Yeah. You and Sid got really close. Yeah. That would have been my seventh grade year. And then I think that summer felt called to ministry at the old church. And I had no idea why or like anything about it. But I literally remember you making a call and I walked up to the um, stage. I think that's when I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to stay here and I don't, like, I just want to be as involved as I can. I was literally there every day. I'd make my mom drive me to come like serve. And I did I couldn't even tell you why. I just wanted to be a part. I feel like that's when I like made my relationship with Jesus really personal. Like it was just more like me seeking him for myself and what I felt like he was leading me and calling me to mm -hmm. versus like something more corporate. Like I'm a part of this youth group. This is like what we all do. How much longer before he entered your life then? I think the night we met was not a lock-in, but a New Year's Eve. Y'all met here? Yeah. Yes. I don't think I knew that. I thought you met like, cause you, you were always like playing the drums and doing like these worship events. I thought that yeah. you met him there. The story just took a twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm learning that for the first time right now. Do this yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All by myself. I came from a church that like, the like kind of vibes or whatever, if you will, like it was totally different yeah. from what I was used to. Like I wasn't used to like the whole, I guess like seriousness, like first coming to youth, I always heard the stories of like all the kids and you know, they come to Wednesday night and then they'd go off and do whatever at school. So it was kind of like, that was the culture I was used to. I was kind of not really yet used to what we are one is. Yeah. yeah. Like involved everybody was, how deeply in love with the Lord and everybody is. And I think is. the capacity that I was involved too, cause like. Yeah, and I, like, I didn't understand that. So yeah. I was just like, I mean, honestly, I was like, hey, you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> he was a senior about to graduate. And then you were. A junior. When, like how long before you started dating? We never, <laughs> it depends on how logistic you want to get. Texting is dating. We, we dated. We dated. <laughs> <laughs> and so then shortly after that, it was like your birthday. And I remember telling you happy birthday on Facebook, thinking I was being so sly. So here's what I remember. Yeah. And I think I'm even taking some in some of these details. What I remember was I didn't really know like Nick when he mm -hmm. first came. I just thought he was cute like everybody else did. You know, no, I, no, I, don't, I think I had heard you played the drums and that was it. But I knew you though, very <laughs> Being a 17 year old girl, I was like, he's gonna be my husband. <laughs> like, and you start, to, you start like <laughs> yeah. treating it like that. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch him play drums here or go to Woodward till 2 a.m. Yikes. We would race people, like fast. How fast? The speed limit. How fast? Like 130 miles per hour. Oh, take it easy. <laughs> I remember one time we were driving and I looked over and we were going 130 miles per hour. Now I go 55. 
So I think there was just like a sense of like rebellion that I didn't even know was like starting because I was like finding like this sense of like independence, I guess. Because I was like about to be 18, I was like in six months, I'm going to be off in college and I can be doing whatever. You know what I mean? You said in six months, I was going to be off college doing, you know, yeah. going for it. Did you do that? No. Let's talk about why. <laughs> That's kind of where the story goes yeah. a different goes a different direction yeah. I think with both of you to some degree. Yeah. I was like planning on going to college in a different state. I had my roommates, I had my deposit and everything for North Central. I literally had all my classes, all my scholarships and like I remember going to like a praise gathering, having worship moments and feeling a like a touch of home there and I think that's honestly when like the Lord was like this is like where you're supposed to be. Where it got messy was Little Miss Independent Steph was actually like vulnerable, I guess, just to like you coming in and being like, no, actually this is gonna be my life. At that point you were like working at a dealership, pursuing music, so it's like something you could have done yeah. in another state. It's not like you were super tied down here. I was like very upfront with you about it and you were like, all right, we'll make it work. And I don't know, I think just ultimately I knew that if I were to go to college, I would have met somebody that lined up with my calling. I wanted our relationship to work so badly that I knew if it would be, I don't know, like I'm not giving it the full chance that I feel like I should have given it. I think I, I literally held on to that for two years. And I think that's also a testament to of like a lot of the things I held on that like God had spoke to me from such a young age, I held on to for so long. And along with college, I just literally gave it all up like it was nothing. Tell me the story truly from your perspective, yeah. going back to that time. Yeah. Like I'm I'm obviously concerned. Yeah. Sid and I love you to death. Yeah. We want to protect you. Yeah. I can see I, I can see the wheels of your life are turning. Yeah. And you're burning out at 130 miles an hour yeah. in the wrong direction. Yeah. And you had said that to me and I was like Oh my gosh, because I, like I said, I felt like for so long, I was just like, like trying my best to just be obedient. And like, I was, I was like so afraid of messing up that it like crippled me. But I think the first time that something was like able to go my way or like I was able to like steer my own ship, I like didn't know how to handle it like maturely. Just like that like root of like rebellion was so deep in me that I didn't even know that I was like, just like, okay. I, from 12, well, 13 to 17, I had basically done everything and like really tried my best to be obedient. And I felt like this is the one time that I was like wanting to like figure it out for myself. You were kind of willing to sacrifice anything for Nick is the way I'd explain it. I think some people could hear that and they think, well, isn't that what love is all about? It's like, I think now in retrospect, you're able to look back and be like, man, I wish I would have done some of that differently. It's not as much of like a pressure to like to have sex, but like people like that pressure to like have a boyfriend, I feel is like, like really strong in high school because everybody's in relationships and walking around the school like holding hands and you just feel like you have to fit in and like have somebody. Literally as soon as things started getting physical, they just continued down that path. It was never like, because we didn't have accountability, it was like, once I removed myself from people that would speak truth into me, like I'm the only one that's answering to myself. So it was like- only that, we were like, at this point we were hiding. Yeah. Like there was, we were doing things that we were hiding from people. Yeah. And not telling people yeah. and keeping secrets from yeah. people. And I think that's where it really like took us for a downward turn is it went from being accountable to, um, you know, friends of ours and leadership to keeping secrets from our parents. Yeah, you know, because we wanted to, we wanted to continue do, doing what we were doing because. To the flesh. Exactly. Yeah, because it, yeah, it was gratifying to our flesh, but we still wanted to like somewhat look like we had like all of our like stuff together. Things you never thought you would ever do. We would just like, we. it's like a checklist. Like we were just like checking things off the list. Like living in like active sin and not repenting like things the lines become so blurred that you're like well we're already 
sinning. He had asked me to be his girlfriend. I think we had kissed like maybe a month prior to that. And it was pretty PG. And then literally two days. We slept in a camper together. Yeah. That's what really opened the door is we had went up north together. And yeah, we slept in a camper together. And instead of you sleeping on the other bed, I told you to come sleep in the bed with me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, this is, we're just gonna snuggle. This is gonna be great. And no, that was obviously stupid and naive of me. And that's what like pretty much opened the door to like, then literally a couple days later, me spending the night at your house and us sleeping together. We had a conversation like, I think the day after it happened, yeah, the, it was a, it was either the day after or two days after we had sex, and I said I was like we can't do this again, mm -hmm. like. But we did, then we was, still spent the night with each other, so we were just we had like already taken it too far, yeah, to try and fix it ourselves, yeah, because it was we, just we yeah continued to just live in sin, trying to like, it was like the most awful broken record you could think of just over and over and over again of us constantly like we can't do this and then doing it and we can't do this and then doing it i don't know how you guys were so patient with us at times because i'm like i just want to shake people i'm like if you only knew like if you only knew like what you were about to like what one decision can literally change your whole life and you can't you can't take it back you know like decisions are so permanent and god has so much grace but if we only, if we only knew, yeah. we get like one life on this earth to glorify him the best that we can. And yeah, we're thankful for his grace, but there's definitely repercussions that you don't think about when you're 17 or 18, but that's why, that's why the Lord sets up accountability and wisdom in your life and people to speak that have gone before you. It's hard because when you go through something like that or just like anything in life, you look back and you see you see the way it could have been and you're like, it's too late. So like knowing that if we would have just listened to wisdom in the first place, like God could have worked that together beautifully, but instead like I took that into my own hands and God can give you something beautiful, but if you hold on to it for yourself and you never let him take it away when he needs to take it away, it's not gonna be something beautiful for God. It's gonna be something maybe good for you, but that's it. I'm a photographer and like shooting weddings, especially like Christian weddings, like watching the bride and groom go like off to their honeymoon, knowing that like they're going to be together for the first time. Like that's something that's so hard. It's it's honestly like makes us cry every time, knowing that like just watching our friends get to experience it and like knowing that we mess it up for ourselves out of our own fleshly desire. And sometimes it's almost like it sucks having to watch it, yeah. but it's like the best thing ever. Yeah. Like getting to it watch so couples that for the first time ever, yeah. they're gonna be together. Yeah. We never changed the circumstance. That's the thing is like we wanted, we knew it was wrong, right? Like we were both like, this is not what we should be doing, but we weren't willing to like budge on how late we would hang out or if we would spend the night together or the people we were around or actually finding a church or coming back that like we knew we needed to be. We were kind of like in and out of hanging out with friends that were like, like I didn't drink, smoke, nothing. And we started hanging out with this group of friends that was just like horrible influence. Yeah. And at the time it was like what our flesh felt like yeah. we needed, but it was the complete opposite of what we did. Yeah. And it, we took ourselves down that slope. Yeah. But the influences that were around us and not being in the church, like... Yeah, I think, just, too, just when when we started sleeping together, it just opened a door. You, you proposed to me in December. I started living with you, like, it was the beginning of April, the end of March, beginning of April, at your parents' house. And somewhere after we got engaged, we ended up moving to my parents' house. Um something that was supposed to be like a week of us me staying over there 
ended up being us, literally me moving all my stuff into your house. How long did you live there? Um, until we got married. We watch our wedding video back often. It's so cringy for us. It's ridiculous because we were 20 and 21 had just come, started to come out of a life of a year and a half, almost two years of like, just like sin, just like hardcore sin. Knowing that we basically, obviously we loved each other, but we basically got married so young because of the scripture, like it's better to- Marry than to burn. Yeah, literally. And we were already burning, so more than that. But we knew that if we wanted to turn things around, we needed to get married and be like, try to do it as right as possible. I was a children's director at a church. You were playing drums consistently. We were super plugged in. We felt like after getting engaged, like we were making the right steps towards like doing things right. Like we were finally yeah. like having that conviction of like, okay, we strayed far and we need to get back on track and fast. And we felt like the Lord was like honoring that in a sense. We felt like maybe this is what he had wanted for us. Um, and then literally five months out from our wedding, things just started to crumble. Um, our f like relationships, family relationships. Who married you? You did. How's that? Well, that's like kind Very of. <laughs> I remember we were at a Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. You asked me to do the wedding. Yeah. I was shook. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't our plan. No. Um, originally one of my good friends was supposed to do it and everything, like when she says everything came crashing down, yeah. everything came crashing down. Yeah. And uh, we had talked and like her original plan was for you to always do it. Oh play. yeah. And at this point we weren't back yet. Yeah. And we needed to kind of like humble ourselves and cool. ask you to officiate her In wedding. the back of my mind, I always, like, I, from, I don't know, maybe when I was like 13 or 14 years old, I always thought, oh yeah, Pastor is going to officiate my wedding. That's just how it was. And so the fact that we even got to the point that that wasn't even an option, I mean, the Lord is faithful and looking back, the way he allowed that to crumble. And then we end up having to have the conversation where I was like, hey, like, I think we need to have Pastor Dave do it. I had so much history with you, so it was like a no-brainer for me to have you officiate our wedding, but for him, I think there was still some, a little bit of offense and like- I'd say like offense and shame. Yeah. Cause at that point it was like, we were, I don't want to say crawling back, but we were- Oh yeah, we were. It was embarrassing. Yeah. Like here we are thinking we can do this all ourselves and it's like, we have to come back and humble ourselves and ask you to marry us. And then to have to be like, hey, but by the way, we're living together and sleeping together. Having to admit, like, I knew you guys knew, right? Like it's... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, but it's just having to admit that to you guys and sit there and basically be like you were right the whole time was... I wouldn't say it wasn't easy because of my pride, but it wasn't easy because I was like... I was sh shameful. I was just like, I cannot believe. It was just all starting, to, we were just starting to realize. Yeah. I, I think in one sense, I wanted to say, at the very least in my flesh, I wanted to say no, mm -hmm. because I wanted to be like, I think anybody that's a human being would right. be like, bro, Yeah. you wanted to completely turn, do your own thing, go off, and now you want me? But obviously in the spirit, and that's why we lean into the Holy right. Spirit, that's why we need the Lord to lead yeah. us. I saw it as an open door, not because of just history or not yeah. because of those things. It's like, I could see the beginning of repentance. Yeah. It was the beginning of you humbling yourself. Yeah. Not to us, it's before yeah. God. We yeah. do things before the Lord. You, you talked about earlier about just even sinning without any repentance. I really think that your rebellion was not the issue. Every one of us are born and prone to rebellion. Mm -hmm. We're born and prone to sin. It's going to happen. Yeah. The issue was rebellion without repentance. It wasn't a point, it's like I rebelled, somebody either told me about it, I recognized that there was a quickening in me. 
I need to repent, which means I need to change. I need to turn. I need to do this right before God. It was the rebellion continuing without any repentance. Yeah. What are some of the repercussions that you guys have felt like you've even dealt with now? Yeah. Like as a byproduct of just doing those years wrong. Mm -hmm. Even though God can bring a lot of beauty from this, like what are the things that you still even today or maybe even in the last number of years or whatever it is, feel like you struggle with? A lot of it came back to like my calling and like my place in this church because from such a young age, I felt so called here and like, like to come back and realize that I, 18, 19, 20, even a little bit of 21, I was like wasted that time. And it was like so precious um, and like influential. And I like still look back at almost 25 and I like crave those years. Cause like, I was just like off sinning and like, I just watched like so many people like encounter God and like really figure out what he has for their life. And I, not that I can't still figure that out, but it's just time that like I'll never get back. And I think, like you said, like God uses things like makes beauty from ashes. Like it's part of my testimony that I can like make sure that and encourage and make sure that people, especially young girls, don't like go down the same path that I did. But I was had to come back and pick up so many broken pieces, even with you and Sid and and honestly, just with God and like himself, like literally like that repentance and that journey of like not feeling that shame. And like, I wasn't, I'm, we're not deserving, right? But like truly feeling like I didn't even like deserve a seat here, you know, it was like really hard mentally for me. I think truthfully until probably last year, I walked in a lot of shame because I knew like, I had let so many people down. I had let myself down. I had let God down. And yeah, I got my way, but I was also going, knowing that I'm going to spend like the next how many ever years trying to rebuild something that could have just been, was already like pretty much laid out for me. Like I destroyed it myself, you know? Like there's so many times that I think back to where it's like, we can make this work. Yeah. Like we were, Trying to prove everyone else wrong. Yeah. We were, we were trying to prove to ourselves that we could do it through our own flesh. Yeah. And and like I said, force God's will on our life. And like, that's not how it works. Yeah. And just thinking back, if we would have just done things a little different, yeah. you know, stayed a little more accountable. A lot of more accountable. A lot, of, well, yeah, <laughs> a lot, of more. A lot more accountable. Yeah. God you know, could have blessed it. Oh, yeah. Patient, like, oh, yeah we could have still ended up here. Yeah, It just would have been a lot easier from point A to point B. Yeah. We started dating. Um, we decided against our better judgment to leave the church. Um, we started living together. Uh, we started living in sin together. We just felt the call to come back here. I mean, the sin was like unbearable. A lot of work we had to do on, our, on ourselves. And uh, there was a lot of people and a lot of things that we had to cut out. We went all in for Jesus. And ever since then, it's been like, blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And so I just figured, you know, why not get baptized? I'm gonna baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Maybe to speak to somebody right now, watching this that would go, I've screwed up. Yeah. Like, and I don't even know where to start. Yeah. I don't even know where to go. I've. I've given away something I never wanted to give away. I've done something I never wanted to do. I went to a place I never wanted to go to. I've been saying things I didn't want to say. The people around me right now are just, they do not look like Jesus. Like, what was the next step after this? Like, what was the, the journey you took to be like, we are going to honor the Lord and make this right? I think we recognized the Lord had more for us yeah. than where we were. Yeah. And that was kind of like the start of now we need to make everything right. Yeah. And as hard as that like road was, just taking those small steps of like repenting to the Lord and like really recognizing like our sin, even though we were married, like yeah. I didn't feel free. And it's like so evident why God put you in sin in my life and our lives and the wisdom that you spoke and it would have saved us from a lot of hurt. But like he puts those people in your life for a reason. We had a conversation 
in your basement, and we just kind of pinpointed what we needed to do, who we needed to prune out, like substances we needed to get rid of, um, and we did that, and like, it was not easy. Um, it wasn't easy at all. Doing what is right is not always easy or painless. It's usually the opposite. It's usually pretty painful, but when you really surrender everything, like the Lord, there's a, it's a separation. It's not just, you can have a little bit of this, but I want all of this. It's, you have everything and it's like the blessings that come from that versus like the lack there of blessings that you receive. Like I know what the Lord taught us through that is so much greater than what we had yeah. envisioned. Yeah, what we ever thought would come of it. We're talking about like what calling repentance versus the byproduct of rebellion we're talking about consequences the power of decisions like it's a million different things and all right now comes to a head right here everything that you have said is true if we will repent if we will call on the name of the lord if we'll make heart the, see we we don't have a hard time making bad decisions but we have a hard time making the hard decision which is i'm going to come back I'm going to have that conversa the conversations we've had. I'm going to recognize where I was wrong. I'm going to choose what needs to be cut out. And therefore, I'm blessed because of it. Yeah. You're Like, you're sitting here now, blessed. Yeah. Like, what's crazy about it is you were in the ministry, both of you, and you obviously much more, but you were around it mm -hmm. under leadership, under us, all of that. You flip it now, you're both 25. Now, you are leaders in the ministry that you walked away from. Isn't that crazy? Like, it, it, it is crazy when you think about it. Like, you walk away thinking, that church hurt me. Mm -hmm. People try to say that they flip that around a lot, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, I'm offended, and this is what that was done to me, mm -hmm. and all these things. And you're now literally a leader. You've come back in the same place you walked away from. You're here to walk other people through a journey to try to help them not make the same right. choices. Yeah. But it's even bigger than that. Like, God has blessed you too. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it really is a beauty from Ash's story, it really is a story to be like, yeah, I basically screwed everything up yeah. and Jesus still wanted to redeem it. Like that's what the cross was made for, right. to redeem it. Not only you got one little fireball <laughs> of a girl lately, but you have another one on the way. Even as you sat down, I was like, you, I can see it, you're starting to bump a little bit. Like baby number two on the way and what are you having? It's a... <laughs> it definitely was a little bit of a journey. I think over the last year, we've been able to just like really walk in the blessings of God. It took us a little bit to even like be able to recognize that because of the shame we felt. The Lord can take something that is so broken and ugly and sinful. We're not the same people we were at all when we got married or even started dating, let alone like a couple of years ago. But like just through conversations, even just that we have and who we are and like the way we're walking out God's will together and in our marriage and like leading Wakely. And um, this next little girl is like super special and it feels like really like rewarding to know that like because of what we've gone through in our example that we are able to lead like our girls our children like the best that we can I feel like that's like just like the little sliver of my calling that like the Lord has like revealed and I feel like what something I thought I lost that I was never going to be able to experience that like the Lord had brought back around in such a beautiful way.